Hello, another video from Angry Photographer. I like making things simple. Life should be simplex. Life is short. I hate people that complicate things. Things can be both simple and yet not simplex. Simplex and yet not simple. Um, let's talk about FX sensors, DX sensors, and let's get to the nitty gritty of what is and what is not. Okay, there's no such thing as an FX lens or DX lens. Obviously, as I said in a prior video, there are specifically DX lenses as far as the circle of projection covering, for example, the DX APS-C crop sensor or an FX. Now, the lens is stupid. There's nothing fed to the lens. The lens doesn't know what doesn't care what is underneath it, FX or DX sensor. It just feeds data for focusing to engage vibration reduction. Also, distance calculation on some lenses to uh, tell it to so far as a uh, flash uh, power release. But it doesn't matter if the lens was made in 1970 or if it was made seven days ago. Every lens is stupid, whether it feeds autofocusing data, vibration reduction or not. The lens doesn't give a damn whether there's an FX sensor or a DX sensor underneath it, okay? Every lens, FX or DX, projects a circle of light. Now, if it's a DX lens on an FX sensor, obviously your FX camera is going to auto-crop to DX mode. Uh, I think on the D810, DX uh, crop sensor mode is 18 megapixels. On the D700, it's really low. You don't want to use any DX lenses on your D700 except for possibly 10.5 millimeter fisheye. Even then, I wouldn't do it. That's like the only negative to a D700 is you do not want to be using DX lenses. But who cares? DX lenses are more expensive. FX lenses are far, far more plentiful. I have to talk about resolving power versus lens sharpness. Both together equal image quality. Okay, light fall off. Contrary to what... Another person said in another video talking about perceptual megapixels, which of course don't exist. It's the most absurd nonsense. It's a total phantasm. It's a unicorn, fairy dust, leprechaun sort of BS invented by DxO Mark. I think he's paid by DxO Mark. Pure conjecture on my part, but total nonsense. Okay, circle of light. What is an advantage of using, if this is an FX lens, which it is, 50 millimeter? have a circle projection, say it's a bad lens, like the older 24 to 120 lens. I have distortion, edge coma around here. Okay, this is my FX lens. Okay, so I have corner sharpness issues. Okay, now let's stick that crummy FX lens on a DX camera. Oh my god, it's been eliminated. Why? Because I'm taking a smaller... It's, remember, it's field of view. There's nothing changed in magnification or zoom. The light density, the image projected on the back through the light box of your camera is the same FX for DX. The only difference is the size of the landing pad of that light. Now, contrary to what uh, Ren Cockwell says, I mean Ken Rockwell says, he always says about every FX lens, oh, this is overkill, never use this FX lens on a DX lens, it's overkill, it's overkill. Well, in a very slight sense, it's, it's true, but in a greater sense, it's absolute BS and nonsense. Now, you can't get the same focal length much cheaper, obviously, and part of the projected image you're paying a lot of money for, obviously, is wasted out here where it's not touching the DX sensor. If you want to call that overkill, that's fine, but what you're doing is you can take a crappy FX lens that has corner distortion, or too much distortion, sample out the center part, okay, cut the fat off the steak, if you will, and just take the good part of a bad FX lens. Get the lens cheap, works great on a DX camera. What's to complain about? It's positive down the line. Um, one possible negative, well it's not possible, it is in some cases, like some uh, mid-range zooms, um, is never an issue on a long, like a 70 to 300. I mean, the longer the better on a, like a 70 to 300 on a DX. I mean, who's complaining about getting an effective uh, field of view of 450 millimeters? Nobody is. But like in a mid-range zoom, like a 24 to 70, you know, you're getting like a 35... 
uh, to uh, 130 lens. So you get an oddball mid-range zoom. No big deal, but uh, that can be an issue you have to consider. Uh, D7100, as I told you before, is effective. Uh, full frame crop, uh, full frame sensor is 54.1 megapixel. Let's take a look over here. Let's have Nikon a D750 up here, full frame sensor. And down here we have DX. This is a Nikon D7100. Both of these are 24 megapixels. Okay, so what's the difference? We know what our lens sharpness is, but what else is important? So why? Our bird shooters with $24,000 lenses shooting D7100s instead of D750s or D810s or uh, Nikon D4Ss, where money is no object at all. Pixel density. Okay, I got the same piece of jam on both pieces of toast. Let's call the landing pad, the DX sensor or the full frame sensor, a piece of toast. You got the same amount of jam, the same amount of megapixels. Okay, much larger sensor. What do you think is the case between the two? D7100, you got 23.5 by 15.6. Uh, D750, you have uh, 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters. Pixel density. I show you the examples. And the da I've also uploaded the raw files if you want to see the raw. I did no conversion. I mean, I did no alteration of the pictures whatsoever on the, uh, the JPEG conversions. This is why wildlife nature photographers or peeping toms need to crop in heavily on a distant object why you want pixel density in certain situations there's not there's no downside to pixel density now there was a case obviously earlier on earlier APS-C crop sensors we had a SNR signal to noise ratio most of that has actually been taken care of okay Look at crop circles between the two. Okay, we know what the image projection is. Circular projection. There's no, obviously, there's no rectangular projection. I have an FX or DX lens. What is being cropped? What are you eliminating? It's field of view. That is all it is. Field of view. Take a crappy FX lens. Stick it on a DX sensor, APS-C crop sensor camera. What's the advantages? Numerous. Pixel density, resolving power. It is not just megapixels. Megapixels only tells you part of the story. You also have AD converters, firmware, and the processor. Smaller space also the higher the capacitance, as is the case in electrical theory. Light density in LUX remains the same. Here's something important I mentioned in the other video. It doesn't matter if it's a $10,000 Zeiss lens or a $50 Vivitar lens. Every lens does this. The better lenses do it to a less degree. And that is, doesn't matter whether it's full frame sensor or APS-C, i.e. DX sensor, the center of the image is brighter. Center weighted. Every lens made is center weighted. Okay, the better lenses disperse this better. ED glass, an element or two, one-sided or double-sided nanoparticle coated. It does that less, but every lens is the same. It doesn't matter how expensive the lens is. There is no zoom on an FX lens on a DX camera. Here we have, say, a 50 millimeter shot. I stick the same lens on an APS-C crop sensor, i.e. DX camera, what do we get? Roughly 75 millimeters, say a portrait. Oh, we've zoomed in. No, we haven't. It's field of view. That's all that's changed. The landing pad for the circle of light from this FX lens is this versus this on the FX sensor. Okay? There is nothing zoomed in. Um, Tony, Tony Northrup's video is wrong. Every lens is center weighted. Every lens, I don't care if it's Zeiss, Sigma, Nikon, Minolta, Canon, does it damn matter? Nanoparticle coated, ED coated, doesn't matter. They're all center weighted. There is higher light density in the center. That's why a crappy FX lens, or moderately crappy FX lens, is better on a DX camera. Also, you can grab them cheaper because everybody wants to get rid of them. Because that lens sucks on their FX cameras. 
Oh my god, what logic is that? Well, it's perfect logic. With regard to pixel size, the SNR, the signal noise ratio of larger pixels, is higher with large pixels when evaluated per pixel. Okay, when someone makes a print, the shot with a higher pixel density camera is downsized to the same resolution as the image taken with the camera with large pixels, and the signal noise ratio advantage of the large pixel camera is lost, i.e., print signal to noise ratio or dynamic range of the print. You know, if the read noise is well controlled, then there's no difference really between the SNR between large and small pixels. Because Canon and Nikon both know that pro pro professional photographers want the highest image quality, not necessarily the highest pixel density, and the inherent trade-offs between pixel density and image noise result in an optimal pixel density and significantly lower than that, the most extreme densities achievable with some of today's CMOS sensors, but that's mostly been eliminated. A lot of the SNR issues with the larger, uh, with the uh, smaller pixel uh, density has been eliminated. Good news, good news for you. That means you can get what formerly used to only be able to get in FX cameras, you can now get in DX cameras. The point is that the megapixel counts don't correlate directly with pixel density, nor do they correlate with image quality. A higher megapixel rating may result from either a higher pixel density giving rise to higher resolving power or simply from a larger sensor which has a lot more pixels spread out over a larger area, which gives a rise to what is obviously the case, a wider field of view. Remember, we got the same hunk of jam here and the same hunk of jam here. We just got a larger piece of toast to spread it out over here. Very simple, right? We got 24 megapixels here and 24 megapixels here. D750, D7100. You got 24 megapixels between the two. What do you think is the case if we spread the jam thinner on the D750? We have larger photo sites. Okay, pixel density isn't that high, which means the 750, no matter how much you like it, and I've got one coming in tomorrow for myself, D750 is not the camera you want if you're going to be cropping in wildlife. Okay. Now, it does have better high ISO response, has a big old buffer, a lot bigger than the 7100. Obviously, it has all of that. But the D7100 will still spank the D750 when it comes to pixel density and cropping in really tight. Higher, although higher pixel densities can potentially resolve finer details in a scene, they also tend to result in a higher image noise because of the photo site being smaller and therefore collecting less light per UT, i.e. unit of time. But this really isn't the case anymore. FX gets lower resolution, also lower noise. DX generally gets higher resolving power and higher noise, but not so much anymore. The trade-off between pixel density and image noise is shifted between higher density with lower noise, i.e. current D7100, D7200. Okay. When an image is digitally zoomed in on the computer so as to blow up the small subject to more fully fill the frame, a trade-off arises between image, uh, the image uh, increased resolution and the increased noise. This is why FX sensors suffer the most pixelation. As I showed you in the test shots, which can download either in JPEG or in RAW. Okay, let's take a look at edge view of pixel density. Here's a large photo site, and here's a, full sm sm uh, uh, a small photo site. Light's coming in here, light's coming in here. It's just like a funnel. It's like, well, the pixel density isn't that high on an FX, but the images look really creamy. Why do you think that 12 megapixel D700 produces such awesome friggin' results? Okay, there's several factors involved, but it's just a giant, huge sensor full of funnels for collecting light in. The photo sites are larger. But I can't say that the D700 is excellent for sticking a 500 millimeter lens on and cropping out birds. That's definitely not the case, in which case you want a D7100 with a higher pixel density. Which is why birders and other people are using that thousand dollar camera, all the 650 now, with a ten, twenty thousand dollar lens. If you like this video, drop me a buck or two, let me know you got any questions, and I'll catch you later. And I hope I made things simple for you in understanding that nothing is changed on the lens. Lens doesn't give a damn what is sitting underneath it. Not a damn. Okay? It projects the same light with the same density, the same lux per square millimeter, FX or DX sensor. The only thing that's different is the landing pad of the light.